Well, let's figure that out. If you're asking me, I'll ask him. You, we were told previously that, oh, you can't know when he was hired, so let's figure it out now. When did you hire Johnny Sutton? I believe we retained him that during that last week that I was first assistant attorney general, Whoa. personally. What? Wait a minute. You're telling us that you hired and retained Johnny Sutton while you were still at the office? Correct. And at the same time, you're allocating $50,000 to retain him? And we make the decision not to do that. Wait a minute. Okay, help me on this. This is news. You're saying under oath that while you were an employee of the Attorney General's office, before you resigned, that you had already hired Johnny Sutton. Is that right? I believe that's so. What day? Ooh. First, first contact. Ooh. He says in his subpoena, uh, qu- trying to quash the subpoena, it was before you went to the FBI. I think that's correct. Okay, so now we're all clear. You personally had hired Johnny Sutton, an outside lawyer, in your individual capacity before you went to the FBI. Is that right? Correct. And at the same time, in fact, Ooh. the next day on October 1, you were telling Lacey Mays and the controller to set aside $50,000 for Johnny Sutton? For the office to retain Johnny Sutton. Well, you were going to have Johnny Sutton represent you individually and also the office? And who oh. you were going to have the office pay for it? Oh, dude, what were you doing? That's not correct. Dude, no. Dude. It is not uncommon. You realize no. now. That, what you that's, just testified to? Could you, could you let him finish, please? Just finish his answer. Do you realize what you just testified to? <sighs> no, sir. You just told this entire jury that you had hired an outside lawyer in your individual capacity before you went to the FBI on September 30th, 2020. And the very next day, you were instructing your subordinates to set aside $50,000 for Johnny Sutton. And the agency never hired Mr. Oh, Sutton. The agency never paid no. any money to Mr. Sutton. The no. Made, the decision that we no. made was the agency not to hire him. That never happened. The decision we made, we, me and the other. At best. At best, you're inviting your own lawyer into an explicit conflict of interest. That's the good version. <laughs> Can you help at me understand? At best, I guess you've told me now. At Johnny best, you've hired, hired this guy to represent $20. you. Was he an individual in your dispute against the AG's office at the same time you're having the AG's office hire him to work for the AG's office, inviting him into the most explicit conflict of interest ever? Secret. That's the good version. Also, incidentally, because you yourself are also a lawyer and are directly inviting another lawyer into an explicit conflict of interest, you're also violating your own ethics. That's the good version. It gets worse from there. It, okay. it, 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 you, you know, the, the, the non-good version, Williams, uh, it could Ryan look Ryan. like, it could to a did person you know, look, look like invoice? self-dealing. You'd have to ask them, sir. I will. I'm or even them. embezzlement. I never asked them if they looked at the invoices. Okay. Or even an attempt to get you your personal yet, lawyer on the inside so that they might be able to extract information sure that would help you in your case or something. Nate Paul had anything financially to do with the renovation of the Paxson's home? Did you did your lawyer re- and your lawyer did your lawyer recognize that he was being invited into a criminal conspiracy? Support. I I appreciate that every lawyer may not understand like more subtle conflicts right away but like uh did your lawyer not notice the obvious and glaring conflict that was like the most glaring, obvious conflict of interest ever? I, you are my personal attorney for me as I'm about to leave the attorney general's office because I'm a whistleblower. Also, I'd like to have you hired by the attorney general's office at the exact same time. There's not a lot of great ways of spending that, people. I guess if it was the most walled garden ever, but no, not not even then. That's because he's the first AG. Okay, yeah. 
And he's using taxpayer monies to, monies to do it, of course. So there's that. Uh, talk about this uh, forensic report so, uh, that he introduced as Attorney General three. That probably violates a couple laws relating to, you know, to you about honest services uh, fraud and embezzlement right. and you want the, official corruption, violation of oaths, and probably a couple other things if I put my thinking hat on. Uh, my brain hurts now let me ask you also this. because apparently you about also because apparently uh, oh my god it even gets one step worse because you were knowingly and purposefully involving your uh, involving your attorney in an ongoing fraud so that the jury remembers guess what that means to attorney client privilege i was what date was the day before September 30th all right and on the date on the uh the date so can we call the attorney to the stand we sure can you sent attorney client privilege just disappeared into a nice little puff of smoke it happened right before our eyes it was magic the attorney general asking to meet with you it's actually October 1st that's October 1st all right that is sometime that day did you did you did you as a group decide that was not a good idea we did eventually decide that. Yes. Was that after you had uh, authorized the exercise of paperwork to make it possible? Well, what we did again was my email was making sure and seeking confirmation that there were funds in the event we decided to do that. We did not do that. Had we done it, we would have gone through. We've gone at length through. The yeah, day. that's that's one way of we're characterizing it. A more aggressive fact, prosecutor might. Your explanation is we were putting money aside with an idea of potentially hiring for the future, and we decided not to do that. A, a more aggressive prosecutor might characterize it as an a, as a uh, substantial step in furtherance of a criminal activity might qualify as attempted fill in the blank. Before funds are expended or a contract is executed all right so before a contract could have been worked out with yeah. mr sutton initially i'd also like to point out that this is their this is their start starting witness it's not going great right now of all the attorneys in all the world to hire at the ag office it just happened to be your personal attorney that you had also just hired did mr mr sutton he was the most qualified person for the job I believe so. Okie dokie. Right. And by that time, had y'all orally retained him to represent you individually instead of the company, the uh, the agency? Yes. Sir. Uh, uh, Do you uh, have uh, any uh, 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 evidence? Or and of course, what is your? Of course, now you can make a potentially colorable argument, and and and, 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 and it just continues to get worse. Pile. Depending about. on what That's other really people right. knew. At the AG's office, depending what these other people knew that were in up, up, up arms that were involved in the removing of the letterhead and stuff, depending on their involvement, you had retained him. I did not. If they were in an if they were in an agreement, ask if they were in an agreement. More areas. And then this guy went and tried to hire his own lawyer Carrington Coleman Mr. Coleman to work for the AG's office criminal cases so when I was a first and he took an overt step did do a couple criminal cases in furtherance of the agreement what is your experience they have a name for that too what they believe may be a crime to law enforcement 